Well, Betty, I am here, uh, very pleased to say I'm here with Bob Greifeld, the chief executive officer of NASDAQ OMX. He's for, here for a repeat visit to Davos, and we have the opportunity to talk again. Uh, Bob, I want to start off by talking about your business. Sure. You broke a four-quarter streak of falling profit thanks to your new BX platform and some aggressive cost cutting. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to know, does your business have the momentum to keep up the earnings growth, and uh, can you take out more costs if necessary? Well, we're about to go into a quiet period, Eric, so I have to couch, you know, couch what I say very carefully, but I would say this, that we see uh, our underlying drivers for all our core businesses improving. Uh, in particular, you look at the IPO market. The first half of 2009, historic lows. Second half, we saw noticeable progress. We believe the first half of 2010 will continue uh, that progress. Okay, how much, though, does the recent volatility we've seen and what the VIX futures are telling us about volatility to come in the next six months threaten that outlook? Well, certainly volatility is our friend, but when you look at the core drivers of our business, it's a very small component of it. So today, we're a globally diversified firm. We have uh, assets in all uh, derivative products, in equity products, in market technology, in data. Uh, so we feel very good about our positioning. I should be clear, clearly volatility is the friend of the exchange. I was, yeah. uh, I should have been more specific. I was thinking more about IPOs. But, but we should move on. Sure. Do you think, though, that the, um, a lot of money, let's say this, a lot of money went into credit in 2009 and equity trading volumes on platforms such as yours dropped off. Do you think we'll see a sustainable return to equity trading over the course of this year and perhaps going into next? Well, I believe that. First off, 2009 as compared to 8 was lower equity trading, but 08 was record because of what transpired. So 09 was really solid. We certainly think that we'll continue to see modest but up uh, upbeats in terms of uh, what trading volume we'll, we'll witness. Okay, so outside of trading volume, outside of new listings, what do you think will be the main drivers for your business? Well, we're starting a power market in the UK. We think that's going to be a great success uh, for us. We uh, basically have the power market in the Nordic market. We're expanding that expertise into that uh, part of the world. We feel very good about that. Market technology, exchanges worldwide need uh, technology. We're the leading provider of it. We have over 70 exchanges using our technology. We had some major wins last year. We expect to continue that momentum in 2010. What's going to happen with the regulatory scrutiny on high-frequency trading? Well, that's a great question. The concept release came out from the commission last week, and I think that will start a dialogue not just on high-frequency trading, uh, but on all aspects of market structure. It's been about a decade since we had this type of dialogue in the community, so I think that will be a good thing. Our general feeling is high-frequency trading uh, brings liquidity to the market. It obviously has to be properly regulated, but liquidity is obviously a valuable part of the market. And it's important to recognize that this issue is not an issue invented in our time or our place. It goes back to the Rothschilds in Europe who used horses to, horses to get to the market sooner. Then we had carrier pigeons. Then we had the telegraph. And now we have people using computers to generate high-frequency trades. What's going to happen to NASDAQ OMX if the president and Paul Volcker's proposal on prop trading goes through? Well, first off, I think if there's an economic reason for proprietary trading, that will exist independent of the corporate structure. Uh, we believe there's ways to make sure that there is separation within a bank holding company uh, between the various aspects of the operation. You don't necessarily have to go as far as the administration is uh, possibly contemplating. How about dark pools? They were on the front burner a few months ago. Now they're on the back burner. What's going to happen there? Well, they're part of the SEC concept release. So high-frequency trading, co-location services, dark pool, it's all there. You'll see that, uh, I think, conversation and dialogue develop in 2010 and probably get resolved somewhere in 2011. And I would say with dark pools, it's a nuanced discussion. They're neither good nor bad. Uh, they certainly bring value to the market when you have thinly traded uh, stocks. We see value to the, to the dark pools. And clearly, if everything was traded in a dark market, that wouldn't be good also. So we need the answer to see some, some prices. Yeah, we need to see some prices. All right, Bob, wonderful to have you here again. That's Bob Greifeld, the CEO of NASDAQ OMX. Betty, right here at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland.